Luis, your first defeat of the season. How do you, you sum up the night and the performance? Yeah, feeling. My feeling is sad and a bad feeling, of course. But I have to say that uh, we couldn't compete at the level that they did, and they deserve to win the match. And they press press at a high the whole first match, and they um, got two goals. And after that, they defend the, in a different way. And they deserve that victory. Were Arsenal all you expected in terms of their approach? Yeah, I know the the intensity of the of the of that team, how they play with the ball, on the ball, and off the ball. Um, they are at the high level, top level, no doubt in that. Um, it wasn't a surprise. We knew that the standards were there. I, is the frustration for you as well the the second goal? to score direct from a free kick? That happens in football, it's normal. And, uh, we have to accept we were uh, losing almost every single duel and, uh, against a team like Arsenal, so aggressive in the pressure. And you don't win the duels, you are going to suffer. And OK, we'll try to go on and think about the next match. And how do you view now for Paris Saint-Germain the next sequence of games? You have some difficult games in this competition. Yeah, we were the team with uh, the, the worst uh, draw, and we have to, to manage that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Just as exactly what we talked about, about Arsenal pressing yeah. high, and they couldn't beat the press. But listen, he's a great manager. There's no question about it. His record is there for all to see. And you know all the criticism I'm giving out here at this minute? I've done the same things myself, so at the end of mm -hmm. the day. So I think that um, I, I, hopefully you pick up and you learn from it. You know, there are there, the, it's not going to happen because they will continue to play out as exactly as you say. They will mm -hmm. continue to do that there. But if it's going to cost you in, in the long term, it didn't cost them in terms of all the goals that might have been scored tonight, but one day it will do. Mikel Arteta is presumably quite a happy man after all that. Mikel, how much of a statement was that beating one of the top-ranked teams in Europe quite comfortably? Really happy. Uh, obviously, we want to make uh, the Emirates a really difficult place to come. Uh, we really want to feel comfortable, reassured that against big opponents we can play um, our own way. And, and I'm really happy of, with the results, with the clean sheet. Uh, with the performance, especially in the first half. And, and then the second half, we have to adapt. Uh, the way they played as well um, forces us to be deep, much deeper than we wanted in many moments, but uh, we're still happy to, to play that game. Set pieces continue to be a very important part of your game. Is it time to give a shout out to your set piece coach? Uh, we always do. We always give credit uh, to the coaches uh, for the work that they do. But at the end, the players have, have to buy into that, you know, and. Uh, we put a lot of effort and, and work into that. Um, it's a situation that can change the game. Today it did. We had another three, four big open situations to score, and we didn't. So we have to score somehow to, to win games. Is it fair to say that it is a part of the game that more teams are working on, much more compared to a couple of years ago? Yeah, no, no. I think in the last five, five years, it was an enormous change. You see that the, the amount of specialists that are in the game and everything, everybody works on everything. And that's why it's, it's tougher and tougher to, to win. Finally, you're still unbeaten this season. What do you say about the level of consistency that the team is in at the moment? Yeah, really good, because especially after the international break, it's been a really challenging period. The amount of games, the level of the games, the little recovery that we had between games in comparison to other teams. Injuries still, you know, the team adapts, the team wants it, and uh, we continue to win. Thank you. Thank you. Don't worry, that set piece coach has been getting plenty of shout outs. I've given him a couple already <laughs> myself tonight. Kenny, we've done their Premier League game at the weekend against Leicester. That match tonight. Has it influenced how you think about Arsenal's season, what you've seen over the last couple of days? No, no, probably just uh, reinforced it, if anything else. Mm. Just feel the strength and depth now in, in the squad. Look at that kind of midfield, speaking about uh, Rodri up in Manchester City. Of the strength Arsenal have in there, that partnership of Partey and Declan Royce, they could lose one of them. They have a replacement there already. Marino came off the bench and got minutes there, so he's another option. Yeah, From that central midfield area, Timber as well, coming to California, strengthened that defensive area, the pitch. And Enrique allude, alluded to it there. He mentioned that we lost too many duels, and I think what he was talking about was they couldn't deal with Arsenal's physicality, and this is a strong, physical 
Arsenal team who can play and win in any number of ways. And if PSG had to improve in that area, even those kind of fundamentals, just physically being able to stand up to that type of Arsenal team, which they are, they're technically good, clever footballers, but they can look after themselves. And if you want a physical battle with Arsenal, as they showed up at the Etihad last week, no problem at all. Che? Or Martin, either? Or yeah, right. Well, well, yeah, Enrique said before the, uh, before the game that Arsenal might be the strongest side in European football when they haven't got the ball. And I think that's been proved over the last couple of weeks, particularly Manchester City couldn't break them down really until the last minute of the game or the 96th minute, and they were down to 10. Even in the second half here, even though, even though we felt from a distance they're comfortable, they sat back, you heard uh, Havertz saying, uh, you know, we thought we dropped a wee bit too deep. But even so, they know that they're protecting a two-goal lead at the end. They're comfortable in many aspects. Yes, they had um, Paris Saint-Germain had that chance when it hit the bar, in the top of the bar, but, you know, that was isolated, I must admit. There was no concerted pressure on them tonight. And Arsenal continued to impress defensively. Best team in the world without the ball, Shay? <sighs> big, big statement, that one. Um, well, it's not for me. It's, <laughs> it's from Luis Enrique, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think Luis Enrique, obviously, they've all got top analysts as well at these clubs at these top clubs as well and surely he would watch Arsenal this season and say they press high up the pitch so we need a plan B to, to, to mm -hmm. sort of miss out that press or do something different they, they didn't have a plan B I felt but Arsenal at the minute doesn't seem to have any weaknesses now if somebody like Kai Havertz or something it seems that they might have a problem but at the same time they're so close they're knocking on the door on all fronts Champions League and Premier League but until they can actually open the door and get their hands on something we could be sitting here next this time next year saying the exact same thing. Okay, well listen, I think that's I think that's the first time we've heard the word, use of the word superannuated on the show, Martin. So <laughs> you brought a new one to us there, nicely, <laughs> nicely done. Rice doesn't look too badly injured, hovering a little bit, but what do you make of Arsenal's performance? Yeah, no, I'd be really pr pleased, Arteta. Probably looked at about 78 percent capacity most of those Arsenal players, and what I look about Arsenal, we're seeing more of it these days. They can play anyway. They can go after your pressure high up the pitch. At times they drop off. They're prepared to allow you to have the ball. They actually entice you into their half the pitch, so, such as the confidence they have in their defensive structure. Now they can braid out quickly and hurt you on the counter attack. So more of a battle-hardened Arsenal team against the kind of work in progress you felt PSG, uh, PSG team. We're out some of their best players. They had no focal point to the attack. Mark makes the point correctly about the midfield three. A little bit samey, samey in there playing a lot of safe passes, but they probably didn't have that focal point. Ramos up front, that number nine, who was pinned in centre half, saying, yeah, give the ball into my feet, you can play off me. No Dembele, who's a big player for them off the right-hand side. So I'd cut them a little bit of slack, but certainly they need to improve. You're giving Arsenal a chance to win the big ones this year, the Champions League and especially the Premier League. Shay, you're not so sure? Any more convinced after tonight? Because that's a high-quality outfit. That we're yeah, putting. yeah, I'm still not convinced until they prove me wrong, I suppose, and, and get their hands on some silverware. Then I, I still think... I, st I know Havertz has scored a game, but I still think they're lacking maybe a focal point, a point when it comes to the latter stages of the season. Big games, you know, it comes down to the final home straight. And even in the Champions League as well, have they got that big player to step up and get? Them? And 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 time will tell. And 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 Arsenal fans always probably shouting the TV will prove him wrong, you know, because you can be a left with egg in your face, I suppose, if, if if they pull it off. Well, they are finding different ways to do it. Set pieces is one way, which is as old school as it gets, Martin. And they've also got the Havertz and these non-traditional mm -hmm. strikers who are chipping in. Yeah, well, you, you know, you talk about set pieces; it's part of the game. And a couple of years ago, I think it was the opening, the opening match of the season, a couple of years when they went to Brentford and they were absolutely mauled, you know, for set pieces. And they've learned about that there. Not, not only have they learned defensively, but offensively as well too. So it's a big part of the game, but they can play as well too, you know. Saka's a brilliant, brilliant footballer. I, again, I, I, I know I mentioned this earlier, but to me, he is the, he's the outstanding player. He's the most creative player. And Arsenal play relatively simple in many aspects. Strong midfield, really strong in the midfield, strong running midfield, but eventually overload to, so that they can get Saka on a one-to-one -one situations. And invariably, he'll go past players. Saka's a great example. We know, as Mar spoke about his qualities there, his technical ability, his assists, his numbers are phenomenal mm. off the chart, but his work rate. Mm. Now, if there was a lesson there for, we mentioned back home before mm. the game, didn't have a great night. <laughs> but being on the same pitch as Saka tonight is an indicator to him yeah. the level he has to get at. Not only in possession, but our position. How hard Saka works for the team is absolutely phenomenal. You're losing faith in Barcola? No, 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 I'm sticking yeah. with him. Sticking with him for now, mm. yeah. Please he's destined for the top. <laughs> he's destined for the top, that kid. <laughs> no, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> Might just take a little bit longer. A good day at the office there. 2 0 win for them. Kai Havertz was a scorer of goal number one. Guy, well done, a winning start at home. How do you sum up the performance? 
No, I think uh, we played very well, especially first half. Second half, uh, I think sometimes we were a bit too passive, um, but still, it was a good game, great result for us, and uh, good three points. You're enjoying this stage. It's your stage right now, this stadium. Sixth game running, you've scored. Why? Why so at home? I don't know. It feels great to, to play here. I love the stadium. I love the fans. And uh, I'm just so thankful to be here and play with that team. Alan Shearer, our commentator, said you, you look like you're enjoying the physicality of the game as much as, as any time in your career right now. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, it was a big step for me. I think back in the days, I wasn't uh, the player who loved uh, the duels and everything. But right now, I just love it and love to have the team with us. When you see that cross from Leandro coming in, Maybe you know Donnarumma's coming. What are you thinking? I, I didn't even think too much. I just saw the ball, went for it, and uh, was lucky that I was uh, in front of uh, the goalkeeper. And you know what it takes to, to win this competition. Beating Paris Saint-Germain tonight, semi-finalist last season. What does it tell you about Arsenal in this competition this season? Yeah, I think we are there. Um, if, we, if we win against teams like this, um, it's important to know. It always uh, gives us a big boost. and. Um, Last year, I think um, against Bayern was tough to, to go out against them, to lose against them. But I think we grew up as a team and want to get better that, uh, this year. You sense a conviction, a belief around the stadium, which there maybe hasn't always been in this competition for this team. Yeah, but uh, uh, it's so nice to play here. You see the fans before the game, especially how they, how they support us, uh, how they support us in difficult moments. That's the most important and we want to give always something back to them. Guy, well done tonight. You are as well player of the match. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Player of the match. It was a pretty good interview as well, I thought. That was interesting, Martin, what he said about having to learn to start enjoying the physical side of it because he's, he's a unit. I think that's right because when he came over here, I know he scored in the Champions League final, but at the end of it all, he, he, had, he had a lot of difficulty and it looked as if he didn't like the physicality kind of, of the game. Kind ghosted around the periphery ghosted a little bit. Ghosted around, yeah. no genuine pace, crowd getting at him, things like this here. And even in his days at Arsenal, Funnily enough, when I was actually at the game, uh, Brentford versus Arsenal must have been uh, two seasons ago, perhaps now, and he comes on and he comes on and scores in the last minute of the game, and it honestly, it's almost like galvanised him. It's uh, as if I, I've, I've broken off something here. I can do this, and uh, and he's taken off. I'm not saying that particular minute. Me watching him <laughs> was the one was suggesting that, but really it was, and and he has he's been fantastic, really. Although I. Again, I am inclined to agree with Shea that I think that Arsenal may need what you th think about in terms of a centre forward, you know? Mm. Mm. Well, let's have a look at Havertz's yeah. moment tonight, though. Martin, this is the goal that set them on their way. <coughs> and it's yeah. the usual. Uh, he's Isn't just, this is a lot. He, he, again, he's, he goes in, but he gets yeah. in the end of stuff. Yeah, uh, absolutely. He's, uh, he's looking at the play here at this minute. It's, it's a lovely little ball in, but it's one that the goalkeeper you're thinking about. As Shea mentioned, he's only just back. He's missed the last couple of games down a run. But Havertz, I, I don't think, I honestly don't think that about a season and a half ago, Havertz would have gone for that. Mm -hmm. And he's done it now. And, uh, and he's gone very it's bravely. Often he's done it now, Martin, Absolutely. And, and, and when you look at the pictures back, and I'm sort of, sort of uh, not backing my own argument here, he glides in from midfield through the centre half, and he has no one to pick up. And he sort of, he, he arrives in them positions a lot. And as you mentioned, the size of him, six foot three, six foot four, he's brilliant in the air. Yeah, yeah, he, done, he done this a lot for uh, watching him play Leverkusen quite a bit. He played in kind of a number uh, uh, ten position. The amount of times he gli glided into the box, and he was, is one of his strengths actually is his kind of aerial ability. But he lost his way, way a little bit. And you're right, he lost his confidence. First mm. half of la last season, he was absolutely shot, and he found something mm. second half of the season. Fair play again to Arteta. He stuck with him, kept putting him into the team, and he finished the season strongly. And he's picked up where he left off. The second goal was, I mean, there's not much positive to say about the defending on this one. This is a, credit to Saka because it was Saka's goal because no one touched yeah, him the way in. Yeah, there's a few things about this. So it's that near post zone, of course. For me, you, you always need a defender in there because the defender knows he has to open up his body. He's got to see those runners coming and he's got to make sure he's the first one who goes to meet the ball. That's exactly what Barkley doesn't do there. And he doesn't do it because he's not a defender and he hasn't got those defensive instincts. What I would say behind him, I think uh, PSG need to do a little bit better because Arsenal flood that near post there. You look at the number of Arsenal players arriving here and Mark Krenos is absolutely swamped by about two or three Arsenal players. And the last thing I'd say is Don Aruma for me, that's to stick that right arm out. Have a look at him here. That's kind of powder puff from the, 
uh, PSG goalkeeper for me. I think he needs to make himself bigger there, at least anticipate that ball potentially might come in a straight line and get that right arm up. What did you go on, Green? <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just listening to a goalkeeper and expert. Oh, so about you can, call, you can no, comment no, about no, the outfield no, players, we can't comment no, about goalkeeper. No, I was going to agree with you if you give me a chance. Because <laughs> that last angle is a wee bit damning on, on the goalkeeper, if I'm being honest. Because you can see you can see the flight of the ball coming to him. And obviously he gets distracted by the bodies coming across him. But as a goalkeeper, if he keeps his eye on the ball, he should really make the save, can he, if I'm being honest. And if someone toe pokes it in front of him and goes in there, there's nothing you can do with that one. He was extremely highly rated at one stage. He was. I mean, uh, he's he supposed uh, to be a great shot stopper, if not amazing with his feet. So yeah. He didn't really stop the shots tonight. Mm -hmm. He didn't, know, and, and Mark might show you some stuff playing out from the back as well. I don't think he's the best with the ball at his feet either. Mm -hmm. So they're still, you know, they paid, they, uh, they, he's highly paid, one of the highest paid goalkeepers in world football, I think. But I still think there's question marks over him both with the ball at his feet and also mm -hmm. obviously with his goalkeeper. Paris Saint Germain had a few moments we showed at halftime in the first half. Maybe a few for being generous in the second half. Well, they need one of these to go in, didn't they? Uh, I think this is maybe Ruse at the near post. Just, I suppose you need a bit of luck in football as well. You know, could have hit the bar when under Raya was, was baiting on this occasion. But they, you needed one of these to make a game of it, really. Look, look at the clock on the top, top under 66 minutes. This is Ruse with a long range sort of shot. Probably rare, comfortable enough. This one, I think it's Lee with a the shot. There's, there's, there's a, this is a decent save, and because it, it moves a lot, and you know, Raya has to readjust his position. But again, you know, if you're shooting from 30, 30 yards out, Arsenal will probably Arteta will be happy enough with opposition. position. Usman Dembele might have been handy out there tonight, Shay. He was dropped for well, disciplinary Well, that, that's the other question, Mark. Now, and I, I imagine the, the media in, back in France will be having a bit of a field day. You know, did the manager, and Bobby Martin's probably a good person to ask this, did the manager get it wrong? Because their star player's not there, and they were a bit powder puff in front of the goal. Would he have made the difference? What do you think, Martin? You have to, I presume you have to stand by your decision. You can't uh, just go by the so result. Uh, absolutely right. You have to do that. What might be interesting about it, and um, I might know this myself, that if this is the second, this is the second Champions League game. If this had been the last Champions League game, and Paris Saint Germain needed something for it, maybe maybe mm. the referee. It's, it's that great old quote, you know. I have principles, and if you don't like them, I have others. You know? <laughs> so I think that that that's it. Yeah. That's the big thing about it. So I don't know. I I, I wonder what I would have done myself. Yeah, but, I uh, wonder though, Kenny, because when you look at their fixtures, they've got some hard games. Atletico, they still have to play Bayern, Manchester City, Stuttgart, which is uh, Mar Martin's dark horse. So they've got some tricky fixtures. I I doubt they'll finish outside the top 24, but certainly like a top eight automatic spot in the yeah. last 16 mm -hmm. looks very tricky now. Yeah, yeah, but that's the beauty of this, how we're, we're set up now. You can afford to take a few kind of hits, a few beatings almost, but you got your prize in those two or three kind of wins, which will take you through. So you're right, you've got some difficult fixtures coming up, but I still expect them to accumulate enough points to actually even to get into the, the knockout stages. And that wasn't their best 11. Let's, yeah, let, let's clarify, that wasn't their best 11 on the pitch this evening. Kimpembe comes in at centre-half. The two substitutes, even Ruiz, he has to come back into centre midfield, like we said. Otherwise, they're too lightweight in there, too many similar players. And Mouani, at least given the physical presence, had a bit of running power when he came off the bench. So for me, there's more to come from this PSG team. What up to the new identity we were supposed to see, though? It's a, a new team. You know, it's, that's part of the reason that he was dropped and that the belly was dropped. And Enrique's been big on this. It's his second season in charge now. It's just too early to judge them. Yeah, but that doesn't come in an in that doesn't come in an instant in terms of building that rapport and that kind of culture out of uh, at a football club. That was a first step in terms of slapping a. Uh, Dembele yeah, down this evening so yeah like I said I think the, the, man, uh, the fans are going to have to be patient with the manager uh, moving forward this team has to evolve and improve we'll wait and see yeah I think short term I, I mean people he might get some criticism for it but generally speaking I think what will done he sent down the marker and I think the players will respond to that there I think they'll feel Dembele's not got away with it whatever it may be and uh, and we'll th this man this man's here for the future. Yeah, That's he's in the charge. Point. Yeah. There were a couple of half penalty shouts. Any more than that? Do you think for Paris? Oh yeah, I thought the second was half to three quarters. To be honest with you, Declan <laughs> Rice. Not this one for me. Look, then the rules of the game. Ball hits that. Is it a natural uh, position for the for the arm to be in? I think it is. The ball only travels three yards. It hits Callum Fiori, but his hands uh, by his side for me. So no penalty. That's pretty uh, straightforward for me. The second one is from a corner kick where there's a little yeah. bit of grappling, which we see a lot of. There was a bit of a clamp down on this at one point, Kenny. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be a problem yeah. anymore. Declan Royce does a lot of this for me. He gets. I'm talking about physically imposing yourself. I have no problem with that. But when you turn your back and your on the ball and wrap both your arms around the opposition player, preventing them getting them off the ground, yeah. you're really running a, a danger there, giving away a penalty kick. I, I'm with you, Kenny, in that there, because every single week a corner against Arsenal and uh, Royce is doing exactly that. He's not been... Uh, He's not been 
punished for it so far, but somewhere along the way, the messages get through, finally get to referees and people like this here, you know, they, they're listening in, they tune in, and eventually they'll... Uh, they will start listening to Kenny. They'll definitely <laughs> listen to Kenny. There's no question about it. Never grapple at a yeah, never grappled at a yeah. corner kick, I'm sure. You know, sure I, can, I can see a referee being interviewed and saying that's all down to Cunningham. <laughs> you know, but so I, I never looked away. No. I, thought, but back, I never, I never heard a coach more that encourage a player to turn his back on the ball to try and Absolutely. mark a play. And for me, it actually threw me off kilter when I couldn't see the ball mm. and I was purely focused on the player. It made me kind of really nervous. Not, how can you impose yourself and get yourself into the right defensive position when you can't actually see the well, ball? Well, you're not the trusting the ball? your teammates. If everyone else is doing their job, and your only job is basically to rugby tackle one of their main headers at the ball, they're not yeah, being Yeah, but taking a huge risk from yeah. there. It's, it's a, a gamble, risk. isn't it? It's a gamble. It's a gamble. The referee, especially in, in the yeah. Champions League, yeah. you can see them picking them up. VAR yeah. is very... He's yeah. lucky, I think, he got away one there, the second one, definitely. Yeah. Would they be coached to do that? I mean, is that all part of this? Well, is this uh, Nicholas Yeover? Is you see, going go back years, you see the Italians sort of defending and they have their arms out and mm. blocking. Mm. And I think he can get away with it easier. But what Rice is doing there is nearly like grappling and, yeah. and, and, and getting his arms around him. Dark arts, would you call it, Che? I would call <laughs> it the dark <laughs> arts. Dark 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 Well, allegedly, yeah. Uh, what else was happening? The oh yeah, so Arsenal were getting a lot of joy, Martin, out of pressing Paris Saint Germain high. And Paris didn't seem to have much of an answer for this. You weren't impressed with how they, they tried to play through it. Yeah, I've, I've got this feeling that most teams, most teams in world football, are unable to play the ball out from the back. And they're very, very few. And these, these that, that's, a, that's obviously a great save with a nice little move. But these things, are, these are just gifts for Arsenal. And, and of course they would know this, that Paris Saint-Germain are trying to play it out from the back, so they'll close them. And they take the ball off them, and suddenly, for, for, for nothing really, they're getting in on goal. And, it's, and this, was, this was, we're seeing some examples from this here from the second half, but it was happening all first half as well too. The, what happens is the big centre half plays the ball to, to Mendes, generally speaking, in the first half. Mendes has nowhere to go. He's trying to, he's trying to uh, find the, his midfield player. His midfield player gets closed down. And this, this is, just look at it. You know, these are shots on goal and proper, proper chances, all because of Paris trying to play the ball out. Yeah. This is the modern game, isn't it? I'd say 80, 90 percent of football teams that I watch, whether it's Premier League, Championship, electricity over here, all everybody's looking to play this way. And it's always the same risk and reward. Are you good enough to play yeah. around that initial press? But if they you, should be good enough. I, I understand when teams of a low level are trying to do it and it, they, they don't have the capability. But if you're a Paris, if you have all the money they have, you have the technical that they have, surely they'd be a club that should aspire to be able to beating a press. No? But if you're being closed down by really good players, then it is very, very difficult. So no matter how, how talented you think you are, if you're being closed down by an equally talented player who can take the ball off you and then outrun you, what, perhaps. What they didn't have as well, Martin, was a focal point. They didn't have, we've already mentioned this, they didn't have a bigger striker they yeah. could miss but out the press. Over the yeah. press. Yeah. Play over the press. And then what happens if you play over the press a couple of times, Arsenal just drop off and then you can start to play. There is yeah. a logic yeah. to it though, right? Like Luis Enrique is a vastly experienced manager. He has had success. So he, he sees some benefit if they can make this work over the I'll longer think you'll, term. I'll tell, you one one. I'll tell you what would be really interesting. I don't know whether anybody has ever done a stat in this. It's been going on now for a couple of seasons. I don't have that stat. I'd love, don't to worry know, about that I'd love to know what the stat is for the number of times that the press has been beaten by the number of times that the players have closed down and robbed them. Yeah. You know, that would be really that interesting. That sounds like a college PhD it, that well somebody has well to get involved it's, it's in. Yeah, it's not because, I mean, the hands, game yeah. is stats-driven now yeah. at this minute. Therefore, that should be really important. Well, we're talking about every single level, Martin. I mean, we're talking about, as Kenny says, the Champions League level, we're talking Premier League. How many goals? Like, look at Southampton, probably a good example in, in the Premier League. How many goals are they conceding by over Burnley, Burnley, Burnley last year Burnley last last a good year. example. Please, there are times to play it out. Don't, yeah. don't be thinking, well, I'm, I'm, ju I'm just, uh, what do you call it, a, a, a superannuated Luddite or something like this here. But mm. there are times, and you can play the ball out from the back, but if you're being closed and, and, and you're being seen to do that, surely a heavens a goalkeeper can see the situation and think, I, I can't play it straight in there. because can't say very, very much. That, yeah. the only, Generally speaking, I The only thing I would him. say in the goalkeeper's defence yeah. is that he's been coached to play from the back. That's true. So no matter what happens, Arsenal do, I still want you to give it to the centre yeah. half, I still want you to give it to the right back, whatever. The goalkeeper That's is true. key though as well, isn't it? If you've got Ederson at the back, you can begin the play from there. Yeah. You need you need your you need your goalkeeper to be your best ball player. Effectively. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, Which Ederson's... Some, Ederson, of, some think, of them are now. I think Ederson's probably killed all the old goalkeepers around the world <laughs> because he is like a centre midfielder playing in goals. Yeah. And he's so good, he's so comfortable on the ball. Donnarum, but Donnarum looks a bit clunky, doesn't he? Donnarum, that, like that I think he's about seven foot tall, so it's a long way down from the yeah. brain to the feet, you know. Just got to mm. mix it up. I think mm. he's just got to be smart with it. Yeah. 
like the, we've seen Manchester City probably the best there is in terms of mm. playing it out but they don't mind hitting it uh, back to front to Haaland overneath the press if they have to but they have that physical yeah. presence up front Let's see what Luis Enrique has to say post-match here is the Paris manager